Hey everyone, it's Kevin and Primrose and Sandra here from the backyard where we do science. And I just took a break from trying to build the world's fastest Nerf gun because I just got my DNA results. And so now we're going to go over my results because if you don't remember, a long time ago I did a giveaway for people who could guess my DNA results. What do they get? What do they get? Well, remember, I promised this aluminum casting to the winner who could get all the questions right. And you also might be wondering what this shocker is here that I built. It's a hand crank electric generator. But first, let's, uh, let's just go over our results, find out the winner of this, and then we'll uh, shock ourselves so you can stand the most pain. What fun! For science. What all right. fun! Okay, so the first question was photic sneeze reflex. And that's basically, if you look at a bright light and it makes you sneeze or it helps you sneeze if you already have to, and what do you think? What do you have? Uh, the light makes me sneeze. Light makes me sneeze also. Sometimes I've been a little kid, my mom would say, you know, if I have to sneeze, look at a bright light to help yeah. you sneeze. So that's a yes for me. So next up was salty or sweet foods. I should clarify that your results don't actually tell you if you prefer salty or sweet foods, just that your genetics say that you are likely to prefer salty or sweet foods. I'm sweet enough already. <laughs> I like salty foods. You're I'll, salty enough already. I never liked cake, I never liked ice cream or like soda. I would always just go for the pizza, you know? That was that was why I was there. Your birthday party's always a bummer. There's never ice cream. <laughs> if you're still in, congratulations. The next question is, can I taste the bitter compound PTC? It's a bitter compound. <laughs> Oops, I guess I misspoke there. They're not actually testing that you're likely to taste PTC. They're testing if you can likely taste bitter compounds in general. When I was in sixth grade, we did like an experiment in my biology class. The teacher had some chemical, probably PTC, on these little paper strips, and we would each taste it and say that, you know, could we taste it or not? What, what does it taste like? Just like... Like if you could compare it to something. Like have you ever gotten any like, you know, cleaning chemicals or something in your mouth? <laughs> like rubbing alcohol? Like you, you use rubbing alcohol or like acetone on something and then you like, touch your... You know? Oh yeah, like you take your nail polish off and then you... Oh yeah. Can you, it's like super, super bitter. Yeah. Or like air duster, if you've ever sprayed air duster in the air and you just like inhale it, it just, that sounds bad, but it's, yeah, got, a because... it's got a chemical in there so you don't do that. And if you get it in your mouth somehow, oh my gosh, it's like concentrated bitter. Because it actually contains a chemical called dunatonium benzoate, which is probably, I think, one of the most bitter compounds in the world. And they put it in all sorts of clean products so little kids don't drink it. My sister drank Windex once. Sorry, Kathleen, but she thought it was Gatorade, so they put this chemical in there so people don't eat it. How far into the bottle did she get? So, so the next one is, can I smell asparagus in urine? I can smell asparagus in urine, because you always eat it, so yes, I I love can. asparagus. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can it's smell it. It's good, you it. can smell it too? Oh, yeah. Yep, that one's true, I can smell it. And it says right here in my genetic testing results, I'm likely to smell it also. The first four questions were pretty simple, and I needed to throw a tiebreaker in there. So I asked what percent of Neanderthal is in my DNA. So that's pretty much between, I've looked at other reports, one and five percent. So that's what I asked for people to guess, and I asked them to guess it, you know, to the hundredth decimal place, to really spice it up, because it would have <laughs> yeah. been way too easy if it was just four questions. I really spice it up, extra spicy. <laughs> extra spicy. Extra spicy. Wow, it seems like a high number. How much do you have? <laughs> 258. I have 268. <laughs> Dang. Anyway, I just figured out how many Neanderthal variants I have, and I figured out how much they test for, so I got about 2.41%. So, after going through, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of comments, and I finally figured out there was actually only one person that got this right. Even the Neanderthal part? Even the Neanderthal part. <laughs> yep, and that was Deeble Doobel on, tw on Twitter. Yeah. So congratulations, Deeble Doobel. Um, I'm going to send this out to you. You won. Another cool thing about 23andMe is when you do get your results back, they ask you if you want to share it with them to help them do research. So, you know, it's pretty cool if you can have millions of people share all their DNA results and you go through and answer a bunch of personal questions about your lifestyle and other things and they build up this huge database of, you know, risk factors and genetic markers and they found all kind of genetic markers that lead to certain diseases or traits and all this other kind of stuff. One of them that they're working on right now is, is there a genetic factor to pain tolerance? So what they're doing is they're asking people to stick their hands in bowls of water and see how long, bowls of very cold ice water, and see how long it takes, how long they can hold their hand in there for. Remember doing that with your friends when you were a kid? Yeah, that was like a challenge before was, YouTube, you know? It was horrible. But I think I could kick that up a notch and we could try, see how what our pain tolerance <laughs> is to electricity. 
Why would you want to kick it up like that? So this right here, what I have is a hand cranked generator and it uses the motor out of a microwave oven. The motor that spins the plate around on the inside. It only uses about four watts of electricity and it, you know, spins it really slow. It's a small motor, but if you spin it really fast, it can produce electricity. Did hold. you take that out of our microwave? No, no, this is an extra one I found. Okay. No, no, hold it. Just, oh. just, just hold them. Oh, oh. my God! <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, I mean, it does put out about 120 volts of electricity, so it is quite painful, but the power level is actually pretty low. I think it's like 30 milliamps, and you're not actually going to be putting 30 milliamps into your body because of skin resistance. It's probably... We can measure your skin resistance and find out exactly how much is going through your body, and that's why we can make this scientific. All right, so here's the experiment we're gonna do. We're each gonna hold a wire in our hands, and I put a resistor on the on the end of one of them, so it's not gonna be that painful of a shock. But it should it'll still, be less painful. It'll probably be, it's limited to a maximum of 15 milliamps, which is definitely in a safe zone. Still, don't try this at home. And we're not gonna have it go across our heart. That's why we're doing it hand to hand. So, are you ready? All you gotta do is touch me. All right, I'm gonna touch you like this, then I'm gonna turn it on. Do you feel it? Does it hurt? Yeah. Oh, you lost. <laughs> my thumb. It like hurt my thumbnail. Yeah? It yeah. feels weird. Let me touch you in other spots. Like. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> now try doing it too. Try touching me. Ow! <laughs> okay, that would like hurt, hurt. I think because it was a little surface area, so. Uh... Ow! That one like really hurt. Yeah. That one is like. Daddy. Now let's, let's fist bump. Oh! Oh, it hurts! Faster! Ah! Faster! Ah! Oh gosh. Wow, that really hurts. <laughs> Prim thinks you're stupid. So anyway, if you want to make one of your own, um, you know, hand crank generators out of an old microwave, there's a lot of videos on YouTube how to do that. Just search microwave motor generator and you'll find all kinds of stuff like that. Well, that was a fun time. You learned a little bit about my DNA and you got to watch Sandra and I shock ourselves with some jerry-rigged <laughs> contraption. <laughs> if you want to learn something about yourself and what is in your DNA, you can go to 23andMe.com slash backyard and order yourself your own kit. I'm trying to say that 23andMe tells you more about just if you like salty or sweet foods. They can also tell you your ancestry, where you're from, you know, if you have relatives you might not know about. My sister got the kit and she sent me a message that says, I'm more African than you, so... <laughs> I guess we found that out. I have no African DNA and she has some at least. Ooh. And on top of just learning cool things about yourself and your family history, you're also helping to advance research from like crowdsourced DNA results. So, you know, you go on, you answer some questions and then they have enough data and they can make conclusions and write up papers and do some tests and, you know, maybe cure something or at least find out what causes diseases so you know what to look for in the future. I'm just waiting for them to come out with a DNA dog testing kit because I want to find out what kind of puppy she was. She's a rescue and they told us she is a Pitbull Greyhound mix and I don't know. They don't really know anything about her so that'd be cool. Hint hint 23 and me. You should try that. <laughs> That's it for this video guys. Thanks for hanging around and I'm going to continue working on that world's fastest Nerf gun. So see you next time. Bye.